Hey guys, what's up? It's Melanie. I wanted to show you this really cool project that I made all out of cardboard. I was watching a video the other day. Another DIY retailer had this super cool grain feed that was real. It's metal. And she had it above her register in her store. And I thought, how cool is that? This is what I have now. And I think it's time for an upgrade. Let's see if I can pull it off had this old baby box spring and I figured that might be the perfect thing to base the size of this uh, creation <laughs> off of. Now is kind of a bad time with the coronavirus, but any other time, if you go to one of your big box store furniture stores, they have really large boxes and they are usually very um, willing to give them to you because they don't want to dispose of them. So, hey, that's what I did. And here we go. Full disclosure, I don't have a clue what I'm doing, guys. I'm just gonna wing it. Hopefully this is gonna turn out cool. Hang in there with me. And now I'm really just trying to copy the picture of the real grain feed that she had. So I'm gonna cut out a, um, a like a frame for it. All right, so I cut all those strips out, have them laid out. I think that I know what I'm doing now, I think. I'm gonna go out, cut up another box, and let's see if we can make that dome that goes on top. Okay, this video is not made for kids, but if there are any kids watching, geometry, very important. I so wish now that I'm an adult and I'm building stuff that I would have paid attention to my math. I didn't, so I have to struggle. So kiddos, Pay attention. I measured the inside, the size of the box spring that we're using. Now I'm gonna go and just score it. I'm not cutting all the way through because I want this to happen. So Hamish is helping me. We're gonna use that two by four so that when we bend it up, we'll get a straight line. Okay, so we're trying to make that dome that goes on top of that frame that we already built. So if we fold those corners up, you can see they don't meet equal. So we have to fold it up and then we have to take that triangle that I'm cutting right now and go to all four corners and cut out the same triangle. That way when we fold it together, all the corners will meet into a nice cool dome. It's not time to glue yet, so we're just gonna tape everything together. That way we can get a good visual and keep moving on. Using things that you have around the house to get the shapes that you want is really, really helpful. So this old coffee can, coffee, coffee can, is going to get me a nice circle. And this old placemat will get me a nice oval. Thank goodness I am a junk collector. <laughs> This whole gluing and taping process took me about three hours. So here we go. We're gonna do a time-lapse video because obviously nobody wants to sit around for three hours. Glued everything together with hot glue and then I went around and taped the edges with painter's tape. That way we couldn't see any of that corrugation.
got a big box of the long glue strips at Home Depot. It really helped. Um, that way you don't burn through them so fast and um, they just last a little longer. flipped upside down and I want this dome to be attached really well so I'm going to go ahead and attach it with the glue and then I'm just going to tape it so that I don't have to sit there and hold it while it dries. All right so it's time to start attaching all our tiers on. I thought I'd use all these um, old jewels that I had. Maybe I can make them look like rivets. I don't know, we'll see. Okay, well, it looks kind of cool. I like it. It looks um, like a submarine to me. <laughs> All right, well, let's go ahead and put um, pretty much every color of spray paint I have on here. I just want to cover up the cardboard. That's really my goal. All right, now that we made a huge hot mess out of this, we just used every color of spray paint that I had in order to just get it covered. That was my goal. So now we're gonna use a product called Modern Masters. This is the Rust. This is a active, oxi it's an oxidizing metallic paint. We're gonna take some of this and we're gonna mix it with sawdust together. I'm gonna put it on here. Hopefully this is gonna come out cool. We're just going to use that sawdust, mix in some of our Modern Masters iron oxidizing paint, and we're going to start applying it. Modern Masters oxidizing paints work in the fashion that you have to apply one coat, let it dry, and then you have to apply another coat right on top of it. Then you apply your activator and it activates it and makes it look like, um, like rust. So here we go. I have hopes that this whole thing is gonna get rusty, but I'm really applying the rust into like the crevices. Where would a piece of metal actually naturally rust? I'm running a little bit low on paint here at the house, but, and I don't wanna to go to the store, you know, the whole virus thing. Anyways, we're gonna go ahead and just mix up a few different colors. We're gonna throw some more sawdust in there and we're gonna start stippling. Getting a lot of texture on here. That's the plan. If you need any DIY paint, you can hit up my website at windmillvintagedesigns.com. I'll put the link in the comments below. For this technique, this pouncing, 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 I really try to use a brush that I don't absolutely love. This is a brush I got from Home Depot or whatever. I'm gonna lose a ton of bristles while I do it. Hate these brushes, but at the same time, I'm not gonna beat up one of my good ones. So here we go with that. And um, we're gonna get almost full coverage. I just wanna kinda leave 
some of that iron paint that I put on there. I want to leave that because I want to apply more in a minute here and then we're going to activate it. Now that we have it pretty much covered, we're going to go back in with our iron paint. Now I'm going to use the rust activator. It's a liquid. I'm going to pour it in here and I'm going to use just a kitchen sponge to apply it. I don't want it to be harsh lines, so I'm going to kind of work it a little bit and rub it around and let's see what it looks like. Unfortunately, I do not sell Modern Masters products. They are owned by Rust-Oleum and in order to carry their products, you have to carry everything in the line of Rust-Oleum. Well, obviously our small business cannot handle that. I buy mine from a wholesale retailer, but I'm gonna give you guys a couple links to Amazon um, if you're interested in any of the Modern Masters products. They're pretty darn cool. What happens is as this dries, that activate, activating, activating paint will start to turn. So it'll turn from this brown color into a rust color. And it happens, I don't know, takes like half hour. And then uh, in a few more hours, you have even more rust. It's really cool to watch it change. is not a chemical free paint by any means you want to wear a mask and you want to do it in a well ventilated area you can see now it's trying it's starting to turn starting to turn a rusty color and then when I woke up in the morning this is what we had so cool all right guys it's time to load it up and take it to the store we're gonna strap it down, super windy. Oh, we gotta stop at Home Depot. I forgot, we need chain. Let's get some chain for this guy so we can hook it to the ceiling and then we'll head off to the store. And wouldn't you know, it decided to rain, yay. Things are looking pretty stale over here. Everything is closed because of the virus again. We are shipping, so don't forget that, but me and Haim are gonna get this guy in the store. Over the last few years, I have hooked so many things to this mattress up here. So I'm gonna get them all down so we can get the mattress down and then we can get down to business. Went and bought a new set of lights for this guy, so I'm gonna go ahead and try to get them on there. Just kinda moving everything out of the way, getting ready to get that one down so that we can get the new one up. And hopefully not break anything in our store at the, <laughs> at the same time. full-size old metal mattress it is so heavy I don't even know how we got it up there don't really remember even doing it but I'm thinking it's probably a good thing that we took it down it's just too heavy we're just gonna hook those chains on there the chain goes down through the card pad where I drilled a hole and hooks onto the mattress itself. The lights are attached to the mattress. This should all work well. We'll just keep cinching it up step by step till we have it right. I'm not happy with that. That looks so silly. That top part's gotta go. We have it. This is my cardboard creation trying to copy that grain feed not as cool as the original by any means but i think it turned out pretty cool tell me what you can create with cardboard i would love to hear your comments please leave them for me and don't forget only you can make it happen thanks for watching